Hi, welcome to the beautiful Alto Sham Culinary Institute. I'm Chef Andy Mayashiba, and I'm standing here with a very special piece of equipment. It's called the AR7E. It's the Alto Sham Electric Rotisserie. When I say special, what I mean is it's the fastest, most energy efficient, and the best looking unit of its kind in the industry. And we're going to talk about all those points as we move along. Before we get too far, however, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the unit so that you can see what we're actually looking at. The center area that we're looking at here is the actual rotisserie itself. It does have a pass-through option, so this unit we can actually load from one side and remove the chickens from the other side if we choose to. It also has, on top, a very unique feature for Alto Sham, a ventless hood system. This means we can place this unit wherever we want within the operation, putting the chickens out where they can be seen by the customer. It has a stainless steel filter, which will capture your grease, only needs to be run through the dishwasher uh, to keep it clean, and a carbon charcoal filter, which simply needs to be replaced, you know, depending on usage, maybe uh, once or twice a year, which will catch the smoke. This bottom unit is actually uh, simply a holding cabinet where we can merchandise our finished product, which uh, is actually powered by the same halo heat technology that powers our world famous cook and hold ovens and holding cabinets. So you see here just one example of a configuration we can put these components into. The great thing about what we have here is the flexibility that we have to mix and match and put these components in different configurations to adapt to your environment. Not only can we put the rotisserie on top of the holding unit, but we can put one rotisserie on top of the other for double the production capacity. Okay? Or if we want, we can put the rotisserie on a countertop or on a stand. Um, even for thinking a little bit outside the box, we can take one of these holding cabinets and put it on top of the other for double the merchandising space. So there's obviously a lot of flexibility there and um, really just depends on your own environment. All right, let's get this baby fired up. When we're using the ventless hood system, we have to have the ventless hood working before we turn on the unit so that we can get all the heat and, and the grease laden vapors and everything. We're ensuring it's getting sucked up into there. So I'm gonna start by turning the unit on you're going to hear the fan kick in in a second here. And to notify the rotisserie that the unit is up here is running, we just push this button here. And you see, I get lights on and we're good to go. All right, let me give you just a quick uh, tour of the control panel itself. You see here we've got a little digital readout. That's where you're going to see all of your times and temperatures displayed as you're setting them or as the unit is actually cooking. Um, down below, we have buttons for setting all of those times and temperatures. Start button, of course. And along here, you see we've got seven buttons for presets, meaning I can lock in different procedures for my chicken, for my ribs, or for things I put in the baskets, like roasting potatoes, wherever that is. Everybody in your operation will now be using the consistent program, making sure you get the same product every time you use the unit. All right, now I'm going to show you how easy it is to set a program into the rotisserie so every time we push that button and push start, it's going to cook the birds consistently so you're getting the same product out in front of your customers every day. We have the power button, cook, cook time, and hold button. So by tapping the power button, you might notice that the preheat light comes on, so it means it's already starting to preheat. but the temperature comes up, 400 degrees. I actually want to stick with 400 degrees, so I'm going to leave it there. If I wanted to change it, I could tap the up and down arrows to alter the temperature however I like. If I want now to set my time, I select the timer and go up or down, but I want to leave it at 45 minutes. I know 45 minutes seems like a very short time to cook chickens in a rotisserie. We'll get into that in a little bit. The last thing I need to do is to tap the hold button. Yes, you can hold chickens in this rotisserie. When the birds are done, they're gonna go from cooking at 400 degrees to holding at 160 degrees. That means if I don't get right to the rotisserie as soon as the timer's done to pull them out, they're not gonna keep on cooking, okay? Now I've got my three basic pieces of information. 
how hot, how long, and how hot am I going to hold it. All I need to do is tap the number one key and the light comes on showing that my program is locked into the unit and I can cook that way every single day of the year. Okay, well most of you are going to use chickens uh, that are already trussed. And a lot of you are going to be using chickens that are already seasoned. But I have yet to find a chicken that you can buy that already has the spit in it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, it, coincidentally, if you want to learn how to truss a chicken the, the way that we've done here with no string, check out one of our other YouTube videos. But it's very simple. I usually like to line up my three chickens in a row and I'll insert the spit into the middle, into the center, and I just kind of, you're going to hear a little pop and it's just some of the bones spreading out a little bit as I push it through. And the last one has to go through the hole here. And we're all set. So really the only last thing I need to do here is um, season them up. And as you can see, I've already seasoned the other ones and I saved just enough seasoning for these last chickens. You can season yourself like I did if you want to. But yeah, it's important to try to get a nice even layer of seasoning on there because this is going to really affect the final color that you get on the, uh, on the chickens through there. And there we go. Okay, perfect. So now we have all seven of our spits ready to go and we're going to load them up into the rotisserie. 45 minutes we're going to have 21 beautifully cooked chickens. All right, now if we take a look at our control panel, we actually see that there's a ready light flashing now, which means that the unit is preheated, ready to load the chickens in. I also hear a beep, so that means it's time to get suited up. Thank you, Tucker Berngard, for these beautiful silicone heat-resistant gloves. All right, open the unit, and all we need to do is place the double prong side into the two holes on one side and go directly into the hole across. Now I'm going to use what's called the jog button on the bottom here to move the chickens so that I can get to the next spot. Now, the only thing I need to do is press start. 45 minutes later, our chicken will be beautiful and roasted. Okay, now that we have our chickens comfortably cooking inside the rotisserie, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why this unit is so fast. Um, first reason is that we have two heat sources. The first heat source is the convection hot air coming from the side of the unit. And the second one is these flat bar cal rods that are on the top of the unit. They actually not only help in the heat creation, but they do add extra crispy texture to the surface of the chickens and they give a little bit more even browning to the presentation side of the bird. The second reason why we get more speedy cooking out of the unit is this door is tightly sealed, meaning that for the most part we're operating with a closed system. We do evacuates some of the additional humidity, but it is quite humid inside here during the roasting process, and humid air transfers heat faster into the chickens than dry air, so we get a lot faster cooking. A great side benefit to that is that the chickens come out more juicy and more plump because we have less evaporation of the natural juices coming out of the chicken. So we get higher yields, better flavor, more juicy in about half the time. All right, you might notice that our rotisserie is now on hold mode because the chickens are done. All I need to do at this point, open up the door, pull these chickens out, and as you can see, I'll just close this door partially here, so I can pull the spit right out, and these babies are ready to go into their containers. 
and we could either display them in our holding unit down below or we could put them in a shelf unit or we could chill them down and serve them later. Um, 45 minutes and you can see the nice even level of coloring that we got and they are very very juicy. You can see the steam coming off of it and um, a, a chicken that is more juicy when you pull it out of the rotisserie will last a lot longer when we put it into holding. If it's dry already it's only going to get worse as we hold it longer. So uh, I'm going to continue to uh, unload these spits right now and then we're going to come back in a minute. I'm going to show you how to disassemble the unit and get it cleaned up. Okay, as you can see, we have all the chickens removed. Um, they're all off being packaged to be put out in front of the customers. And the unit's still turning, so all I need to do first is to push stop. That stops the cooking process. Before we do any kind of disassembling for cleaning, it's really important that we use the cool down feature. So I'm going to actually open the door and I'm going to just tap this cool down button. What that's going to do, it kicks in the fan but turns off the heating element so it blows the heat out of the unit. So we're going to come back in a minute or two after everything's cooled down and we're going to disassemble this unit so it's nice and easy to clean out. All right, fantastic. Our cool down function is completed. The unit still is going to have a little bit of heat left in it. Um, we don't want to let it cool all the way down to room temperature because as most of you know, chicken grease, things like that, when you cool them down too much, become a lot more difficult to clean off of metal surfaces. So I'm still wearing my Tucker Burn Guard gloves. A little note before we take the unit apart, obviously most of you out there know that when you go into a kitchen you can tell the items that are difficult to clean because they're not clean. And when you look at rotisseries, they obviously by the nature of what they do, they have a lot of moving parts and they're hard to clean. There's a lot of nooks and crannies and places to get to. That's why we designed this unit to be very simple, to take apart. In the end, after I show you what we're doing here, we're going to actually have just a stainless steel empty box, which will be very, very simple to simply wash down with a little bit of oven cleaner. First, let's look at the wheel assembly. Normally, this, in many units, this is one piece. We actually have designed it so that I have a little washer here and here, and I can take this bar right out. Huge advantage. I'm not walking through the kitchen with this big dumbbell. Instead, I've got one bar and two wheels. Okay, normally you might be throwing these onto a cart and wheeling them back to the pot washing sink. Okay. I've got two deflector or drip trays here. One, two. Now you see we put aluminum foil on them. It makes it a little bit easier to clean up. If that's not a look that you want, it's okay to go ahead and just put them in there as is. Just a little bit extra scrubbing that might be involved at the end. Um, then we only have the grease collection tray. Now with one load of chicken, we're not going to have too much liquid buildup in here, but if we're doing multiple loads between cleanings, there's actually a spigot that we can turn down and drain some of the grease out into a bucket or something so that when we carry it or put it onto our, our cart or whatever, we're not worried about sloshing all that liquid around. Okay, So at this point, I'm ready to just spray it out with a little bit of oven cleaner and wipe the whole thing out for tomorrow. All right, that's the whole process. We cooked 21 chickens in 45 minutes. That's about half the time in a lot of units that I've seen out there. So hopefully that alone is enough to get you excited to uh, take a look a little bit deeper at this unit. Um, also, I want to just recap what we talked about in the beginning. Not only is it fast, it's very, very energy efficient. We use about 37 cents of electricity to cook those chickens. Okay. Also, not only is it good looking, but uh, with this ventless hood system, we can now move this unit around our operation to a place where we can really get the most impact and use this piece of equipment to market the chickens to your customers. Lastly, it's so easy to take apart. If I have a stainless steel empty box at the end, uh, my ability to clean this thing out quickly and move on to the next task is greatly enhanced. And uh, I think you all can agree that it was very, very easy and fast to take it apart uh, for cleaning. Okay, So thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you want to learn more information about 
the AR7E or any of our equipment, please check out our Altosham website and uh, find all the information you need there. Thank you very much.